Apache Bible Church. How's everyone this morning? Good. Are you warm? Did you get out your winter clothes again like Amy and I did? What is the last time to wear your favorite winter clothes, I think? Because it's going to be 80 by the end of the week. Uh, well, it's good to see everyone. Before we get spiritual, I just got to say, um, you know, I'm a big Texas Tech fan because we have like Corey goes to Tech, our daughter Madison, who's Corey's wife, goes to Tech, Caleb Coleman goes to Tech, so we got a lot of Tech fans. I'm not really a huge basketball fan, but I was screaming at the TV watching the game by myself yesterday. It was a really good game, and then Tim got on to me and told me that uh, Lubbock Christian, the girls won the 2A, the NCAA, what was it, two, second division? Division two, that's it, division two. And those girls won the champions, so we got a lot of basketball roots here in our um, church. But we, we've got deeper roots with the Lord than basketball. That's what we want to talk about today. Uh, we're so excited that on the 25th, you guys saw the... Um, the uh, slide for the afters. They're coming to our church, and we are so very excited um, about their, them being here. And we want you to pass the word around, and we've got lots of little flyers up here, little cards that we want to ask you for your help to help us get that word out in our community. And if you listen to Christian radio, hopefully you've been hearing that on um, the radio in the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, market. So it should be a pretty big deal, and we're excited about that. So, I have some other announcements for you. Jim Markle has an exciting class tonight at 7 o'clock. That is happening in room 207, and it's all about the realm. So, if you guys are just now getting on the realm and you want to find out more information about it, mark your, um, or set your alarm on your watch and come at 7 o'clock tonight and find out more about that. And then here's a great need that we have. You guys, we need candy to fill Easter eggs for our little children's Easter egg hunt, which is always a big deal. So we need you to bring some uh, candy, donate to our cause, and you can drop that off throughout the week in the church um, office. So think candy when you're in the store shopping. And then next Saturday, we're having our women's one-day spring retreat. And that's going to be happening at 9 a.m. and going to last until 3 p.m. And lunch is going to be provided. There's still time for you to sign up if you'd like to do that. There is a cost. Uh, it's $20 for um, registration or it's $10 if you're in high school or you're a college student. Child care is going to be provided. There's going to be a lunch provided. And you can register online or you can go to the Connection Center or contact Melissa for more information on that. And then this is quite a showstopper here at WBC. We have our Awana Grand Prix coming up. And that is happening on Sunday, April the 14th at 5 p.m. And it's happening right here in the sanctuary. So um, make sure that you uh, put that on your calendar because you're going to want to attend that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, apparently this is a big deal. There's a sn snack bar that's going to be open. Oh. Not snack bars. <laughs> snack <Snot> bar. <laughs> Love One the snot bar. <laughs> Allergies. <laughs> um, okay, you're going to need to talk to Tim about that because I don't really know what they're going to be serving, but that's it for me. Hey, would you stand up? Hey, I can't believe they're going to let me talk next Saturday. It's going to be <laughs> exciting. Uh, would you stand up? Go find someone. Give them a hug because it's cold outside and tell them you're glad that they're here this morning. Go enjoy the snot bar. <laughs>
All right. Would you make your way back to your seat? And we're going to begin our worship and song together. Would you join us as we sing How Great Thou Art? Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. You are the word at the beginning.
Thank you. You may be seated. Great to see you here to worship the Lord. As we prepare to receive our offering, we want to go to a time of prayer. And uh, let me just mention a few of those uh, things we want to be praying about. We want to certainly pray for uh, Janet Smith, uh, Sanford's husband, had a fall this, had a fall this morning and uh, not feeling up to coming to come this, this morning. Uh, Janet, Janet suffers with MS, and so we want to pray for her. And to just praise God that nothing was broken or anything like that when she fell this morning. But we're grateful. Uh, we want to pray for her. And we love her, we love her a lot. We also want to lift up Tom Kiker, who was here with us in the morning service, spent the last two days in the emergency room and uh, been passing, passing out and stuff like that with his blood sugar all messed up. So we're grateful that he was here and that he could be back with us this, this, this morning as well. We certainly want to pray for uh, Keith Romero. Keith Romero had uh, blood clot up and down his entire leg. And uh, they did surgery on, surgery on that on Friday, and he's recovering, recovering nicely. Let's continue to pray for Keith. And uh, there'll be no reoccurrence of this blood clot uh, issue that he's had uh, in, in, his le- in his leg. And we also want to pray for Lee Fuller. Lee Fuller's been in the hospital uh, three days this past week, and he's going through ongoing treatments for brain cancer and liver and lung cancer all at the same time. And the, the, new, the news is that uh, the tumor seems to be shrinking. That's the report. The tumor is shrinking. He's responding to the treatment, but it's caused all kinds of other complications with him. So let's just lift up uh, Lee uh, during, during this time. He did come home, and his family's in to visit with him this, uh, this, week, this weekend. So we're glad, we're glad for him. And we continue to pray for Terry Miller. Terry Miller, uh, you know, was in the hospital uh, this week, uh, bladder cancer. They went and scraped all that tissue out and then treated him with chemo. So he's in a lot of pain. Um, uh, even through yesterday, he was saying still a lot of, a lot of pain uh, in his abdomen. So we just lift up these ones and continue to pray for them. Our missionaries of the month, Frank and Melissa Wardlow. And uh, Frank and Melissa are serving in Honduras. They were here two weeks with us. And uh, you, remember, you remember them when they were here. And, of course, she's expecting their first, first child. And they're going to have that next month down there in Honduras. And uh, also they asked us to pray for the, the uh, coffee ministry. Hondurans love coffee. And so while they work up in the villages among the coffee farmers up there, uh, they're hoping down in the city to start a coffee ministry for young people and young adults as they love to gather around a cup of coffee and opportunities there to share Christ. So pray that they find a good location, the right people to work it, and uh, really have an effective ministry of uh, outreach there in Honduras. And so we're excited about uh, the work that God's called them to. I want to pray for Jessica Baker's mom. We're this morning, mom's not doing too well. Yeah, so we would pray for Pam, Pam Stroop. She's been in a nursing home for how, how long now? Almost two years. And so let's pray that she's already not able to respond too much and not able to eat uh, at all right now. So let's pray for God's, God's mercy upon, upon them, them right now uh, as we go to the Lord in, in prayer. Would you join with me? Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you today grateful to know you and be able to uh, have a message to shout out and to proclaim that we are yours, that we belong to you and you belong to us. Lord, what a wonderful possession we have to have you as our Savior and to be bought, to be owned by you, Lord. We, we love you and thank you, Lord, for receiving every one of us by faith into the family of God. We thank you for that. And so we lift up our brothers and sisters this morning and uh, their many needs. We pray for Frank and Melissa and thank you, Lord for their desire to, to continue to spread the message and the, the wonderful hope that is found in Jesus Christ in the country of Honduras. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the ministry that you've given to them and blessed them with as they look for new opportunities. And uh, Lord, I just pray provide everything that they need to get this uh, coffee shop going and continuation of the ministry, not only in the villages, but also there in the city of Gracias. And the bless Melissa as she carries this, uh, this baby as well. Lord, we pray for Janet Smith. God, just uh, thank you that nothing was broken in her fall this morning, but uh, we just pray, Lord, you strengthen her and to heal her, heal her up from uh, just this, uh, being shaken this morning from this uh, bad, fall, bad fall. Lord, we praise you for Tom Kiker getting out and, and uh, Lord, the progress he's making. We praise you for Lee Fuller and progress he's, he's making too in his battle with cancer. Uh, give, him stre- give him strength and a wonderful time with his family uh, this, this weekend as they're gathered around him. And Lord, we continue to pray for Terry Miller and God relieve him of this pain. Thank you the surgery was successful and uh, they did what they needed to do, but uh, relieve him from this pain. We pray for Keith Romero too and uh, God, your grace upon him as he uh, continues uh, his, his uh, re- recovery after this surgery. And Lord, there'll be no more issues with this kind of blood clotting uh, in, his leg, in his legs at all. Thank you, Lord. 
that uh, nothing of that clot moved to his lungs or to his, uh, or to his brain. And uh, Lord, a dangerous situation, but Lord, we thank you for him. We pray for Brenda Eden's mother, for Doc Calvary. God, continue to uh, strengthen her and uh, for the time she's had this past week of not feeling well. And Lord, we pray for Pam Stroop as well. God, we just lift these uh, ladies into your hands, uh, knowing, Lord, you uh, care about them and they matter to you. And uh, so, Lord, when we're uh, perplexed and we don't have the answers, we don't know what to do, Lord, we just pray for your grace and your strength. Lord, take this offering now and continue to magnify yourself through the ministries of this church in this community and uh, through your uh, missionaries um, that this church supports and sponsors around the world. Lord, we praise you and thank you for the mission that you've given to us. Help us to be faithful and to serve you with everything that we have until the day that we see you face to face. Bless this offering now. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship him through our giving.
All right, we're back in John chapter 15 this morning. And I invite you to join with us there and turn your Bibles and look at that passage of Scripture. It's an incredible passage of Scripture where Jesus, again, is instructing his disciples. Remember, just a few hours from now, he's going to be uh, arrested and uh, beaten and tried and uh, put on a cross, and they're going to they're kill, kill him. And Jesus, knowing all this is about to take place, is giving his instructions. Earlier on, he had to- shown the disciples how much he loved them by washing their feet and told them, you know, that as I've served you, as I've loved you, to also love one another. He comes back to that theme in chapter 15. In chapter 15, about loving one another. In chapter 15, verses 12, and then verses 17, this paragraph stands there. And some kind of view this as, well, it's almost like a schizophrenic Jesus or an ADD Jesus. You know, he can't quite get his thoughts together where he's going. He's got one thought going this way, another thought going this way. And he comes back to that theme again. I don't think so that that be said about Jesus. That uh, Jesus got some kind of schizophrenic mindset that he can't keep track of himself. He's just going from one direction to another direction at all. Jesus is pointedly coming back and saying, disciples, you got to love one another because I'm sending you out in the world that doesn't love you. And in order to go out, this is the branching out ministry that God is calling the disciples to. I'm calling you to spread out and to, to take this message, to proclaim it to the rooftops, to proclaim it out from here. But don't get the picture that everybody's going to love what you're doing and everybody's going to welcome what you're doing. So it's vitally important that you have this support base, that you have this connection of love among the body, body of believers, believers that care for one, an, for, one, for one another. Because I'm sending you up. I chose you, I appointed you for this ministry to go out and to carry the message to the world. Now the world, John uses the word world in three different se- senses uh, in, in his gospel. The first one of those is, he talks about in John 1, that he created the world. So we're talking about earth, right? Terra firma. Uh, that is one sense of the world. John chapter 3 talks about the world of humanity. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That whoever believes in him, it's talking about people, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John also uses the world to describe the philosophy of the world, the system that is anti-God, that is anti-Christ. And that world is opposed, is hostile Uh, to the message of Jesus. And that world, that world would hate his disciples, would hate them. Seven times in this passage from John chapter 15, verses 18 through 25, seven times he starts off with hate. They hate you, they hate you, they hate you. They hate the Father, they hate Jesus, they hate you. Uh, What a nice thought to be telling his disciples, isn't it? What a nice thing. But Jesus says, listen, if, if the master doesn't tell his slaves what, what he's doing. Remember this is just the verse before this? But you're my friends. So I'm telling you what's about to take place. I'm preparing you and equipping you for what you're going to face. There's going to be hostility to the message and to the proclamation and to the mission that I'm sending you on to branch out. And to bear this fruit, you're going to face hosti- hostility. Hostility. Now, we can avoid that hostility if we just conform to the world. If we conform to the values and the standards and their thoughts, we can avoid that hostility. The several passages of scriptures remind us, James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? He who become the friend of the world has made himself the enemy of God. You're the wrong side. If you're trying to accommodate to the values of the world, the beliefs and the convictions of the world, and trying to embrace those as, yes, these are really uh, ones that embrace and go right along with Christianity, you've made yourself a friend of the world. Because the world that is anti-God and anti-Christ is hostile to the message and to to the disciples. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I urge you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies to God, living in holy sacrifice, a holy and living sacrament, acceptable to God. This is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world. Don't let the world, as one translation says, squeeze you into its, into its mold. They want to conform you to their beliefs, their standards, their values. Have you felt that? Have you felt that? That maybe things you thought, I'd never approved of that before. All of a sudden, I'm starting to think, Well, everybody else seems to believe that this is okay. 
Everybody else seems to say that this is all right now. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God. There's another passage of scriptures in John, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Verses 12 through 14 indicates that he is speaking to believers and he says these words, love not the world. He's not talking about the world of humanity. He's not talking about the planet. He's talking about the world system that feeds itself on the lust of the flesh. It determines what's right or wrong by what feels good. By the lust of the eyes, what is appealing to our visual and what appeals to our self-worth or self-value apart from God, the pride of life for all that is in the world is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. We face this incredible challenge and this pressure upon us. And as we adopt those values... The danger is upon us that we just become nothing in this world. Because we don't want to be hated. We don't really like that. Do you? I like to be loved. I like to be liked. Did you know that? I like that. Much better than being hated. But to be a follower of Jesus Christ, there is a price that has to be paid. And Jesus says to his disciples, the world will hate you. I've got a little survey or a little quiz I'd like to have passed out. If we can get ushers, maybe some of you ushers who helped out, we gotta get one to everybody here in the the congregation, everybody. Oh, you guys are are rearing or go, look at these guys. Everyone take one of these, please, everybody, okay? And there's a little box for you to check check off. If this is something that you believe, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father, check that box. If you believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, check that box, right? When you get down to the bottom, uh, three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way down this quiz, you'll see a double line. And if you believe some of those things, you add those things to what you have at the beginning, you get double checks for those, okay? There's two boxes there on each of those, okay? So just take a minute, because many of us don't understand the hostility or the opposition, perhaps, to some of you and your beliefs. If you need a pen, ask your wife, ask your girlfriend, ask your neighbor, borrow one. It won't take you long. Just check off the boxes that what you agree with, I believe or I don't believe. Check off those boxes. We're glad we got some Canadians here with us this morning, so they obviously can't check on some of these boxes. The one that says, I voted for President Trump. You don't get to vote on that one, right? <laughs> All right, just go down there and check those, check those boxes. You're not gonna, you don't have to turn these in, okay? So it's, if you're sorry, is I'm going to get graded on this? Somebody's going to no, know? This is just for you. Check your boxes. Is everybody clear on this? Understand? You get double checks for some of these, right? If you really hold that thing, you know? Now, among Christians, there's all kinds of different viewpoints about things. Is that that correct? I would imagine even among our family here this morning, there's different viewpoints on different, different issues and things like that. But I want you to understand, is the world hostile to you? Once you get those boxes checked, flip over to the back side and count up your boxes. How many boxes did you check? Count up on your box side and there you get the score. What the world thinks of you. One to four, you got some wacky ideas, but there's hope for you. Five to nine, you're despicable. 10 to 14, what is it? I don't remember. You're intolerable. You shouldn't be tolerated. 
And the last ones, nobody should put up with you. We ought to get rid of you. Does the world really hate the Christian community and people who stand with Jesus? Maybe you think, well, not here in Waxahachie. Everybody loves Christians in Waxahachie. You know it ain't true. It ain't true anywhere. And as you look on the back side of those sheets, you'll see these names, names and labels that are attached, and you can match them up with everyone in the front, right? But that is the viewpoint that some people have of you if you hold that viewpoint. So I'll just give you a clue, right? So if you say, I voted for Donald Trump, some say you're a fascist. <laughs> you're a fascist if you voted for Donald Trump. And they hate you for it. I'll assure you that. If you're a member of the NRA today, don't raise your hands. You check that, you, you just line it up with that, that one, that you're responsible for gun violence in this country. You're responsible for it. Now just go down that whole list, and if, you know, if you're 20 plus, let me tell you what, don't sit there with great, you are hated, right? That's really the way it is. You get the idea now? Many of us today are feeling like they do, because I'm all those things. I'm bigoted, sexually repressed, homophobic, misogynist, what, whatever, just keep on going. Down. All those names, perhaps, uh, how many, they'll all line up with one of those titles. Okay, you can work on the matching game later on, all right? But I'm just saying that name, those names, just a few of them are enough to hate you. Are enough to hate you. That's why Peter says, to, his, to followers of Jesus, don't be surprised. First Peter chapter 4, don't be surprised if the world hates you. Don't be surprised. Why is it that they hate us? Let's look at the text in this passage. I'm not, can you guys read that in the back? It's too small. It's way too small, isn't it? I'll get that right next time. I should have split this up. If the, let me read it then, all right? Or look in your Bibles. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, I chose you out of the world. Because of this, the world hates you. Why does the world hate disciples of Jesus Christ? Why is it? Because they're not of this world. Followers of Jesus Christ operate under a whole different standard than the standards of the world. They dare to hold things like, this is God's word to us. And the world says, you're idiots. That's just made up stories by men. There's no truth in that at all. And they hate you for it. That you would hold on to this and say, it has any relevance to life today. This is an ancient book made up by men. That's what the world says. If you say, I believe that there are moral absolutes in this world. There are things that are wrong and there are things that are right. It's contrary. It's contrary. Who are you to judge anybody else? Who are you to say what's right or wrong? Stand on the word. Stand on the word. If you're one who holds the value that all religions don't lead to God, that there is only one way, as Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If that's what you believe, you are so narrow-minded and if you dare believe that Jesus is coming again, you are a religious extremist. 
You're dangerous. Really, you're dangerous kind of people. If you embrace the values of this book, you are not in step with the philosophy and the teaching of the world. And they hate you for it. They hate you. You see that passage again? Look how he says, let's just get it clear. The world hates you. It will love you. If you're of its own, because the world loves people who agree with them. But they're, you're intolerable. You're standing in the way of an agenda, of a philosophy that holds to this book. And the world hates you. The second reason he says the world hates you, remember the word that I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. If they kept my word, they'll keep yours also. Listen, the message is, the reason they hate you is because they hate me. We're all in this together. You are undeniably, as a follower of Jesus Christ, linked up to me. They hated me. They hated, oh, I was sorry. We're supposed to get there yet. The world hates Jesus. They hated him from his birth. From his birth to his death, they hated him. Herod, where is he born? Let's kill him. Where's this little baby? We're going to kill him. Jesus began, Luke chapter 4, he begins reading the scriptures from Isaiah, and he says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 29, it says, they came, and they grabbed him. They sought to take him and to throw him off the cliff. Because they knew what he was saying. He was saying, I'm God, I'm the promised one, I'm the Messiah. That's who I am. And they hated him. That's his own townspeople. That's his own people in Nazareth, where he grew up. We're going to kill him. They came to Jesus and said, you know, Jesus, your, your, your family's out here. And in Mark chapter 3, they had come because they said, he's out of his mind. The things Jesus was saying, they said, he's out of his mind. He's lost his marbles. This is his own family members. And Judas, one of the disciples, hated him, betrayed him. And the religious leaders of that day, they hated him. And Jesus says, you know what? A slave is not above his master. If they hate the master, they're going to hate you too. Because you're part of the same thing. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're a disciple of him, you're the same thing. Uh, Robert read from Matthew chapter 10, and those words of that song we just sang, and uh, the words that Jesus taught there in, Ma in John chapter 15, really are parallel to what he taught in John chapter 10. So in John cha I mean Matthew chapter 10, verse 24, listen to what he says. A disciple is not above his ma teacher, nor a slave above his master. It's enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign the members of his own household? Don't be surprised. Don't take it personal. It's not really about you. It's about your God. It's about your Jesus. That's who the world hates. That's who the world does not want to hear about. That's who the world says, shut up about. If they hated me, they'll hate you. But do not fear them, for there's nothing concealed that would not be revealed or hidden that will not be revealed. Do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my fathers in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, I'll also deny him before my fathers in heaven. Don't think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Listen, they're going to come after you. And you read the passage in John chapter 15, it starts off with, they hated you, 
They're going to persecute you. The next step is they're going to ostracize you. Then they're going to kill you. Yeah, just two weeks ago, I went to the Holocaust Museum and, and they talked about the process of the Third Reich, right? To the Jews, what did they do? It was first hatred, marking them off, persecuting them, making them, then ostracizing them, putting them in the ghettos, taking them to the extermination camps. It starts with this down here, with hatred. It's hatred in the heart. And Jesus says the world hates you because they hate me. The reason they hate Jesus is because they're ignorant of God. Look what the next verse says. But all these things they will do for my name's sake because they don't know the one who sent me. They claim they're religious, they're spiritual, they can talk all about God, but Jesus made it clear they don't know him. They have no relationship with him. They can talk about God, but they don't know him. They don't know and recognize that he is the one who created them. He is the one who has a plan for them. He is the one who they will be held accountable to one day. They don't recognize that he is the one that will cast those who reject Jesus Christ into the fires of hell forever. They don't recognize that. They don't know God. They're spiritual, they're religious, but they don't really know God. So understand, understand this, Jesus is saying. You know, listen, if they hate me, what they're doing is really they hate the Father. Because the stamp of God the Father was all upon Jesus Christ. This is my son with whom I am well pleased, the Father said of Jesus. And when you deny the Son, you deny the Father. When you love the Son, you love the Father who sent him. Which side of the line are you on today? Which side of the line are you on? Do you know God? Do you know Jesus? Because if you know Jesus as your Savior, then you know the Father. Which side of the line are you on? The world hates Jesus. The world does not know God. And lastly, the world is guilty. If I had not come and spoken to them, verse 22, they would not have sinned. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Jesus' words, the words that he said, made them conscious of where they stood with God, no matter how religious, how right they thought they were, how, how good they thought they were as people. He made them conscious of their sin. He dared to say some things like, Unless you believe that I am, the words for God, you will die in your sin. In John chapter 8, the Jews were proud of their heritage. Abraham is our father. We have Abraham as a father, the father of the nation of Israel who loved and believed God. And Jesus said, Not so. You are of your father, the devil. <laughs> And they hated him. At Jesus' trial, in just a few hours, when Jesus is standing there, are you the Christ, the Son of God? In Mark chapter 14, verse 62, Jesus says, it is as you say. And they tear their clothes in anger and disgust that Jesus would dare affirm that he is God. And they hated him. His words brought conviction to their souls. Matthew chapter 23, starting in verse 13. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You have these long prayers and all these kind of things, but you're not bringing people to God, you're keeping people away from God. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees! The judgment of hell will be greater upon you good religious people, right? We do the right things. We try. And Jesus says, you're going to hell. I'm telling you, you're going to hell. And they hated him. We don't want to hear words like that. You make us feel guilty, convicted for choices and sins that we are. How could you do this, Jesus? If they had not done among them the works, which I did, no one else did, they would not have sinned. They just multiplied their sin in this whole process. They saw the works that Jesus was doing. So in Matthew chapter 9, verse 34, he's a worker of Satan. That's what they said about him. He did miracles and amazing things in front of him. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 24, he's of his father the devil. He does this thing by the power of demons. And they hated him. His words, his works, all to be rejected. But now they have seen and hated me and my father as well. They have done this to fulfill the word that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. There's no real reason for this hatred and this rejection. It's just in the heart because of sin and guilt. Kill the messenger, right? Reject the message and kill the messenger. The world is guilty. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I wish I could tell you that when God calls you and me to branch out and spread his message like the disciples, that everybody's going to say, we're so glad you came and told us. We are so glad. The world will oppose you. And hate you. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with that? I want to read to you a passage of scripture. I mean, 1 Peter 4 is a great passage of scripture. It says, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when this comes. And make sure you're not getting trouble, persecution, because you're doing the wrong things, right? Don't be, don't be guilty because you're stealing and you're lying, and you're a troublesome, metal, metal, meddlesome, you're just a troublemaker. You, you, you can cause trouble and you say, well, that's because I'm a Christian. No, that ain't a bit. Make sure it's not that. Make sure you're doing the right things. But first, 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 3, I'm going to read this section of verses. Paul's instructions to a young man about how to, how to face a hostile world around him. And look what he says. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him or recruited him as a soldier. If anyone competes as an athlete, he doesn't win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer again should be the first to receive his share of the crop. Consider what I say. 
The Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descendant of David, according to my gospel, for which I suffer hardship even to imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not imprisoned. For this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus and with it eternal glory. It is a trustworthy statement. If we died with him, we will live with him. If we endure, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind these ones, solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words, It's useless, and it leads to the ruin of hearers. But be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth, but avoid worldly and empty chatter. It leads to further ungodliness. Suffer hardship. You're a soldier of Jesus Christ. Run the race. Because you're an athlete called by God. You're a farmer who perseveres in working the soil and doesn't give up. He sees the harvest coming forth. Don't give up. Don't back away. Don't step back. Branch out, because God has called you to. You and I are blessed to live in a country like the United States of America. Thankfully, most of our opposition and the hostility comes in the form of hatred. Few of us have really suffered persecution, although some have. Some have experienced being ostracized, maybe from your family, rejected by your family, by friends, in your workplace. Few die because of their faith. But Christianity today is the number one persecuted religion in the world. More Christians suffer for their faith in Jesus Christ than any other religion in the world. More people died in the 20th century for the name of Jesus Christ than all of the first 19 centuries combined together. There's ministries that are out there that highlight, that focus, that bring attention to the suffering of Christians around the world. Open Doors, Voice of the Martyrs, publications, magazines, stories, websites that are constantly saying, this is what's going on in our world. Don't be naive. Don't close your mind. It's taking place. As we close up our service here in this time and before we take the Lord's Supper, I want to share this uh, brief video with you from North Korea. And may it encourage us, may it prompt us, may it stir us to in this context and in this world we live to proclaim his name from the rooftops. To not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes. He's chosen us. He has called us with a mission in mind to branch out and to carry the message. Watch this video.
회개하면서 예수 믿는 사람들을 그 예수란 말만 해도 하나님이란 말만 해도 북한에서는 세상에서 가장 나쁜 사람들은 예수 믿는 사람들이라고 했고 또 선교사나 목사들은 양의 가족을 쓴 승양이들이라 신앙을 가지게 된 것은 저희 남편 때문이었습니다. 이렇게 해서 아이들이 와서 기도 아버지가 기도하라고 했고 예수님을 믿으라고 했다고 우리 아버지가 믿는 예수님도 좋은 분일 거라고 해서 그때부터 우리는 기도하기 시작을 했습니다. 아 이렇게 아들이 손을 잡아당기고 거기다가 예수님을 믿어라. 예수님은 눈으로는 볼수 없지만 예수님은 확실히 계시고 일을 하신다. 북성대에서 감옥에서 아, 안기부 간첩으로 몰려가지고 그 복음을 전하고 밤에는 원래 복음을 전하고 아픈 사람 기도해주고 그러면서 이제 거기서 아, 그렇게 그런 사역을 할때 하나님께서 그 사람을 통해서 그 감옥에다가 지하교회를 세워주셨어요. 아, 저희 남편은 아, 정말 나는 이제 죽어도 천국이 있다. 천국 소망이 있기 때문에 이제 죽어도 나는 아쉬, 이 세상에 아쉬울 것이 없다고 그냥 그런 이야기를 했다고 그래요. 감옥에 있을 때 특히 감옥에서 정말 많은 사람들이 옆에서 죽어가고 항상 주님께서 내 마음에 기둥이 되고 내 마음에 등대가, 등대가 되어주시고 항상 이 노래를 부를 때마다 자꾸 이렇게 눈물을 흘리게 되죠. 주님 우리가 너무 감사해가지고. 나 같은 죄인 살리신 주 은혜 고마워 생명 찾았고 광명을 얻었네 
Hebrews 13. Remember the prisoners as though you were in prison with them and those who are ill-treated since you yourselves are of the same body. God, we come before you today asking you to make us bold, make us strong, make us courageous, faithful, enduring, persevering, willing to pay the price. Help us to follow Jesus in everything. Help us to stand strong like so many around the world who are imprisoned, beaten. raped, forced into marriages, ostracized, humiliated. God, we pray for them. Grant them mercy and strength today. Deliver them from their oppressors. Deliver these governments. To bring freedom and the spread of the gospel. Help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to receive the elements, the breaking of the bread and drinking of the cup. And as the worship team sings the songs and leads us in prayer, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and you say, I'm one of his followers, and following his example, and sharing this together, as we eat the bread and drink the cup, Remembering Jesus, who suffered for us.
night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. If you come with the cups, gentlemen, ushers, thank you. betrayed also took the cup this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes if you pass your cups to the aisles I should just come by right now and pick them up I'm going to leave you this verse out of 1 Peter chapter 2 For you have been called for this very purpose. Since Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you would follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but he kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his own body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds, you were healed. You were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus in everything. Even if it's counterculture, follow Jesus. Follow him. If you've strayed from Jesus. This passage says, if you have returned 
to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. It's time to return. He's calling you today. Return to me. Come to me. His arms are outstretched to you. Thank you, Lord, for this time we've had together. Move among us. Call us together. Help us to learn how to love one another. So when we come together like this, these are times where we are encouraged and we are strengthened through our worship, through our prayers, through our fellowship together. To go out on our mission into this world proclaiming a message. And may we come back here next week or throughout the week and sense that love and the support that is here to go out another week and carry the message. And another week and another week. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day in the Lord today. And even when my breath is weak, I will sing. I will sing. And even in my suffering, I will sing.